I want nothing to do with you because you have violated a cardinal rule. You've gone against the city of Thebes. That is to say, fathers behave towards their son of, sons appropriately, right? Lose not thy reason, then, my son, or come by pleasure for a woman's sake. But no, a cold embrace is that to have at home a worthless wife, the partner of thy bed. He makes it very quickly about gender. He says, don't you be led by a woman into some kind of going against me and my rule and the state. Now, throughout all of this, we, the audience, are, of course, watching in, in modern audience. Remember, in Sophocles' day, they use masks. But in modern productions of this, we look at, we watch Haman's face, especially when the dad brings up this whole thing about the woman thing. And you can just get a sense that Haman is starting to already get a little bit irritated. What ulcerous sore is worse than one we love who proves all worthless? No, with loathing scorn is hateful to thee, let her go and wed a spouse in Hades. Taken in the act I found her, her alone of all the state, rebellious, her alone. Making, of course, Antigone already in the mind of anyone who knows the, the play of, uh, of Prometheus Bound, very Promethean. She alone, she's all by herself. Now we're going to get into this with Haman here in a little bit. Haman's going to argue, lots of people disagree with what you've done. Antigone's the only one that's got the guts to say anything about it. Creon continues, and I will not make myself false to the state. In other words, I made the rule. I said what would happen if the rule was broken. I can't undo it now. It is too late or I will be an impotent ruler. And I cannot be a ruler, a good ruler, if I don't keep the rules. I gotta be consistent. She dies. So let her call on Zeus, the Lord of Kindred. If I rear of my own uh, if my if I rear of mine own stock things foul and or, and orderless, I shall have work enough with those without. In other words, I got I got to rule my own family, Antigone's family. For he who in the life of home is good will still be seen as just in things of state. This is again the reason I'm spending time with this. It's powerful. This is important stuff. Creon's arguments resonate for Greek audiences. Think of it this way. Creon says. Our families represent little kingdoms. Within our families, the father has to rule and the children have to obey because it's in the family that we learn to obey so that families can produce citizens who will obey their rulers. Or you cannot have a legitimate state. Think about the very idea of obeying authority figures. Why are young children taught in school to obey their teachers, to obey authority figures? Because you have to have people who are willing to obey or you cannot have a state. For example, if the state determines that young people have to go off and fight in a war to defend that state through the act of drafting or conscription, the young people may not want to go and fight but they will go and fight because the state told them that they should. Draft dodging in the last time that America suffered with this challenge in the Vietnam era, draft dodging was illegal, right? Of course, go back to that text that we study on Rainy River. That's a challenging question, right? What do you do, though, if you're a young person and you don't believe in going off to fight in the war? Do you still go and fight even though you don't believe in it because the state has told you that would, that's what it must do? In other words, it is the job of adults to teach children how to obey so that when those children then become citizens, they understand how to obey the state. While he who breaks or goes beyond the laws or thinks to bid the powers that be okay, uh, obey, he must not hope to gather praise from me. In other words, I cannot praise a rule breaker, a law breaker. I made a law. That law has now been broken. I can't praise somebody. I surely can't let Antigone off. Sometimes I've had students that say, really, dude, I was like ready to hate Creon out and out, and now I'm beginning to understand. He's made a rule. It may be a stupid rule, but he's the one in charge. And if after you've made the rule and you're the one in charge and somebody breaks the rule, you've got a major dilemma on your hands. If you don't enforce the rule, you'll look weak. And then everybody will be like, yeah, 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 now he says that, but he doesn't actually mean that. Mm. 
No, he says, we must follow whom the state appoints in things are just and lowly. Or maybe the opposite of things. Of such a man, I should be sure that he would govern well and know well to be governed and should stand in war's wild storm on his appointed post, a just and good defender. And then he goes there. Creon says, the most important thing is to get ready to defend your state. If you don't raise citizens who understand the importance of obedience, you have no soldiers. And if you have no soldiers, you have no defense of your state. End of discussion. The next word, anarchy. Anarchy, he says, is our worst evil, brings our commonwealth to utter ruin. Plato's Republic, the very notion that what is it that leads to the end of the state? Disharmony, anarchy. Everyone's got to be willing to obey the rules. Lays whole houses low. In battle strife hurls men in shameful flight. We think about, of course, the famous line, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Abraham Lincoln, the American Civil War. That is to say that war between the states, between families. But they who walk uprightly, these shall find obedience saves most men. Sure help should come to what our rulers order. Lest of all, ought we to bow before a woman's sway. He comes back to it again. Whatever happens, we're not going to let these women tell us what to do. Far better, if it must be so, to fall by a man's hand than thus to bear reproach by woman conquered. Whoa. It's at this point, of course, that the chorus has got to say something. So they say, unto us, O king, unless our years have robbed us of our wit, thou seemest to say wisely what thou sayest. The chorus, of course, understands that everything, this is the legitimation of, of proper power, right? Everything that's being said here makes sense, right? In other words, um, we've got to we've got to make sure that we can take care. Of, this is a this is a dangerous thing that's happening. In other words, now in the process, Haman will come back and he will say, "Look, I understand what you're saying, but the people they don't agree with you. The people speak behind your back, and I am wanting to protect you." Haman then will say it this way, Such is the whisper that in secret runs all darkly. People are talking, Dad. I'm here because people are talking. And they're saying, This is not good, this is not good, this is not good. And for me, my father, naught is dearer than thy welfare. What can be a nobler form of honor for the son than a sire's glory, or for sire than sons? The only thing I care about, Dad, is you. And you're starting to look kind of like foolish and idiotic here with this law. And I'm telling you now, if you go through with this, the people of Thebes, they won't respect you. The people of Thebes, they will in fact see you as kind of a bad, a bad ruler, right? I pray thee, then, Wear not one mood alone, but what thou sayest is right and not but that. In other words, don't just think you're the only one. Don't just think your way is the only way. For he who thinks that he alone is wise, his mind and spirit above what others boast, such men when searched are mostly empty found. But for a man to learn, and this is a key word in this play. I've often argued that one of the reasons why this play is so compelling even today is because this is a play about learning. And how do you learn what is right? How do you learn what is the appropriate action? Well, you got a young man lecturing an old man, his father, and he says, hey, Dad, it's time you learn something. But for a man to learn, though he be wise, yea, to learn much and know the time to yield brings no disgrace. In other words, he says, hey, 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 there's a time when you got to learn how to back off from some of your commands and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And that time is now. And then he gives an interesting word picture. When winter floods the streams, thou seest the trees that bend before the storm, save their last twigs, while those that will not yield perish with root and branch. Thinking very much like a passage from Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, you have a very similar idea there. That strong tree, when the wind blows, knocks it over. But the tree that's willing to bend in the storm can survive. 
In other words, he's saying to his father, I think you better rethink what you've done. And when one hauls too tight the mainsail uh, sheet and will not slack, now we're back to the idea that the state is like a boat and you've got this mast and you've got to be willing to sometimes let the sail slack or it's going to tear and will not slack. He has to end his voyage with deck overturned. In other words, Dad, you're on the deck as the captain of the ship, but you've got to guide the ship a little better than you're doing it. Let's put it in our notes. This is a son telling his father, you screwed up. How's that usually go over? Some of you smiling as we talk, right? How's that usually go over? Does a parent usually go, hey, I'm so glad that you're giving me an alternate perspective here because, you know, after all, I am just the one in charge, but that doesn't mean that I'm always right. I'm so glad. Yeah, no, 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 no. Authority figures usually don't have time to listen to what somebody has to say that's challenging them. You can imagine if while Creon was talking, we were watching Haman's face, right, in today's presentation. While Haman is talking now, we're watching Creon's face going, oh man, how's this going to go? I bet this doesn't go over well, right? Do thou then yield. You've got to let go of this, Dad. Permit thyself to change. Young though I be, he's willing to admit his age. If any prudent thought be with me, I at least will dare assert the higher worth of one who come what will is full of knowledge. I'm willing to listen as a young person. You should be willing to listen. If that be not, if that may not be, for nature is not wont to take that bent, tis good to learn from those who counsel well. We think of Wordsworth's, my heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky, the final lines, the child is father of the man, and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. Haman says to his dad, I know I'm young, and I know you're old. I know I'm the son, and I know you're the father. I know I'm the subject, and you are the king. But you need to listen to me, and you need to learn. you got to yield on this one. This is a bad decision it's going to end poorly for you. Now Antigone kind of made this argument, but Haman has made a far more powerful argument. Is there ever a time when a parent should say? Is there ever a time when an assistant principal should say to a student? Is there ever a time when an adult should say to a kid, I'm sorry, I was wrong. That was a stupid rule. I shouldn't have made the rule in the first place. And now that you've broken that stupid rule, I'm not going to hold you accountable because it was a dumb rule. Or is that an act of weakness? And that just leads to anarchy. How can you run a school, for example, if the assistant principal is always saying to students, you know, it's a pretty stupid rule. I guess I shouldn't have that rule in the first place. How many parents get away with that with children if over time they say, you will be in at a certain time, and then every time the, the, the young person breaks the rule. How's that work out? Hmm. The chorus is hung. They, 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 they appreciated what Creon had to say, but now the Chorus will say, My king, tis fit that thou shouldst learn from him if he speaks words in season and in turn, that thou shouldst learn of him, for both speak well. I think this is probably the key line of the entire exchange, and here's why. Sophocles knows exactly what he's doing. He's like Shakespeare. He's a genius of a writer. He knows exactly what he's doing. Greek audiences really can't understand and appreciate what today I'm helping, I hope you to as well uh, 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 grasp. In some ways, Greek audiences, because they lived in the patriarchy, they understood more intuitively the tension that's being created here. You've got young people in Antigone and Haman who are attacking the traditional standard understanding that adults make the rules and kids have to get right with it. Antigone says, well, yeah, but what if the gods don't agree? Haman says, well, yeah, but what if, he, what if, the, what if dad's wrong? I mean, doesn't a, doesn't a son ever have the right to tell a father you're wrong? Well, the exchange is only going to get nastier now as we go. Creon says, and will my subjects tell me how to rule? I make the rules around here. Haman says, dost thou not see that these words fall from thee as from some beardless boy? You're talking like a child, an impudent child who says, I'm going to do X and I don't care what anybody else says. It's my world. I'll do what I want. 
Amon says, that's what we normally associate with children. What is it like to be a kid, a, a, a young person, a young adult, and to watch an adult behaving in a childlike way? Do you tell the adult you're behaving like a kid? The moment that, of course, you do that as a kid, you have taken on the role, to some degree, of a certain kind of power. <laughs> How's that gone over the last time that you tried that one? A 3B question we'll get back to. Right? And Creon says, And who then else but me should rule this land? I am the king. I am the ruler. Somebody has to... Last time you were on a ball club and you, and you contested a, a decision of the coach. What's, how does the coach respond to that? The coach says, I am the coach. You do what I tell you to do. Well, yeah, but what if what you're telling us to do is wrong? Then what? Doesn't matter. I'm the coach. Do what... You're, what you're told to do, right? I run this land. Notice, Haman will say, that is no state which hangs on one man's will. Now, this is the question of tyranny, right? And this will take us right back to the questions of the politics of Plato's Republic, for example. What's the best form of rule? Is it a single person? Is it a group of people? Is it a democracy? And in each one of those critiques that we will find in Plato's Republic, we will find that, in fact, he argues you got to have a leader. you got to have somebody who steps up and says, this is the direction we're going. If you're going to have a team, you've got to have a coach. What if the coach says, do X, and the players say, that's a dumb thing to do? What do they do? Hmm. Creon says, the state, I pray, is not reckoned his who governs it. In other words, I embody the state as the ruler. Brave rule, Haman says, alone in or an empty land. In other words, have you forgotten? You have subjects, they should have a say. Now this is important to say subjects should have a say. I would write this down because many have argued this is an early instantiation of the notion of the, ver of the virtue of democracy. Subjects should have a say. Subjects should have an ability to say to their ruler, to their king, to their president, you're wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Whoa. Creon says, here, as it seems, is one who still will fight a woman's friend. Creon wants to make this about Antigone's gender. Haman comes back and he says, if Thou be a woman, for all my care I lavish upon thee. Haman says, Dad, this isn't about Antigone. In the end, this is about you. You are being made to look a tyrant. That's bad form. You don't want to do it. Creon says, Base is the base who with thy father still will hold debate. You shouldn't argue with your father. You should just obey him. Haman comes back and says, for lo, I see thee still guilty of wrong. Yeah, but you're wrong. Creon says, and am I guilty then claiming due reverence for my sovereignty? I am your father and I am the king. You owe me obedience and reverence. Haman says, thou showest no reverence trampling on the laws the gods hold sacred. In other words, when you broke the will of the law of the gods in this whole thing about the, the burial of Polynices, you lost any right to have my reverence. Whoa. Creon says, O oh, thou sin-stained soul, a woman's victim. Now, what's fascinating in this play, and Sophocles, again, the genius of him, we never see whether Haman and Antigone had any conversation about Antigone's decision. Never. We have no idea. But what we do know is that Creon assumes these two got together Antigone's in trouble, and he's coming here to try and get her off the hook. This is all about listening to a woman. Haman says, Yet thou wilt not find in me the slave of baseness. I will not do a bad thing. Creon says, All thy speech still hangs on her. Haman says, Yes, and on thee, myself, the great gods below. In other words, Haman ratchets this up, and he says, This is about all of us. This is about the state. You are behaving inappropriately as a leader, and as such, whoa, you don't deserve to be a leader. If you don't behave appropriately as a leader, you don't deserve to be a leader. You can see why this play, through the years, has created all kinds of dilemmas, right? So, for example, if you are living as a king in a monarchy, and this play is performed, these lines suggest that when... 
citizens no longer agree with what the king is doing, what the leader is doing. It's the job of the citizens to supplant the leader. Woo. Creon says, Abyss be sure, thou shalt not wed her in the life of death. Haman finally, finally is ready to tell him what he thinks about Antigone. She then must die, and in her death, Haman says, will slay another than herself. In other words, Haman says it. If Antigone dies, I die. Now, if to this point, Creon has been working on principle as the king of Thebes, Haman makes this personal, and he says, are you willing to go to the wall, Dad, over this? Because if you jack my girl, I will die. I am willing to die with her. Creon says, and dost thou dare to come thus threatening? In other words, the daddy says to the son, how dare you threat? Are you threatening me? You're telling me that if I follow through on the rule of the law that I have given, you're telling me you're threatening that you will also try and stand by her and die? Haman says, is it then a threat to speak to erring judgment? I'm not threatening. I'm promising. Now, if you watch this done well on stage, and good actors can really produce the tension here, this is one of the most compelling scenes you'll ever see in drama. Because you've got a father who thinks he's right. You've got a son who knows the father is wrong. In the middle, you've got Antigone, who's about to appear, right? Creon says, To thy cost thou shalt learn wisdom, having none thyself. We're back to this learning thing, and Creon says, I'm going to teach you a lesson, boy. To which Haman says, If thou were not my father, I would say thou were not wise. If you were my dad, I'd say you're a complete fool. Taking us back to what Antigone called him. Creon says it again, thou woman.